Welcome to the Faribault Public Schools. What follows is a description and a visit in person to each of the facilities which are part of the Faribault Public School system. A building administrator, a principal, or other program supervisor will take you on a tour of each of these facilities. We also invite you to visit each of the facilities in person if you so desire. Good afternoon. Garfield Elementary School, Willis Shobe, Principal. Garfield is located at 421 Southwest 3rd Avenue, formerly known as the Southern Heights area. The building is a two-story building with a usable basement. Uh, we, in our basement, we have media, chapter one, and a teacher's workroom, along with instrumental music. The original construction of the building was in 1912. Additions have been added in 1925, which consisted of four classrooms, and in 1962, which, have, which consisted of kindergarten, the gymnasium, and bathrooms. And in the 1980s, we added one temporary building. The building is a brick with stucco construction, and the windows in the building are wood, but recently we have, have replaced approximately one half of them with aluminum inserts. All classrooms have been carpeted or are scheduled for carpeting. Building is generally considered to be in good condition. The general description of the, the old building is that we have four classrooms on the second floor. First floor has three classrooms and office space for the Garfield Secretary and District Elementary Office. The new addition houses the kindergarten classroom, gymnasium, and bathrooms. In the old addition, we have installed or built lofts in each classroom to accommodate the small square footage of our classrooms. And the square footage is approximately 870, 875 square feet. Our basement, as I indicated earlier, is currently used for media, teacher's workroom, chapter one, and LD. And the LD and media, it, we accommodate Garfield and the parochial students in this attendance area. Uh, the building serves grades K through six with two sections of kindergarten, first, and second grade. We, currently, we have 245 students enrolled along, and this does not account for the LD or chapter one students. Needs of this building are, we have a small site. The site is approximately three acres, and consequently, we have limited playground and staff parking. Staff parking, excuse me. Um, and it also prohibits exterior expansion. Uh, we have a portable kitchen, and that is set up and taken down each day in the gymnasium, and is stored in the hallway, and, and we do not have adequate storage for space. Uh, and the building is not handicapped accessible. And currently, we need additional classroom space for the 1988-89 school year to accommodate an additional third grade that will be moving up. My name is Robert Anhorn, principal of Lincoln School in Faribault. Our school serves the attendance area primarily of Northwest Faribault and a number of students in the rural areas. Our original Lincoln School building was constructed in 1905 with an addition made in 1954 and a, third, a second addition made in 1969. Our building is primarily a brick exterior throughout the building with our 1954 or middle addition which had its windows enclosed in uh, the uh, fall of last year. Our classrooms include K through six classrooms of 24 with additional classrooms totaling approximately 30 in all. We serve kindergarten through sixth grade students with a number of special education programs. We have a total number of students of 648. Our special programs or services here at Lincoln School include three e TMH classrooms, two EMH classrooms, and one EBD classroom. In addition, we have specialists in the areas of art, music, physical education, inst instrumental music, as well as media services. 
Our special needs or particular needs here at Lincoln School might include some of the following. Currently, our old building is receiving a renovation with windows and carpeting completed this fall. We also are in need of additional classrooms as each year we add one more classroom. Next year would be one more fourth grade needed. Storage area is a real necessity here since we have been using all available space for instructional purposes. Our facilities also include two physical education stations, two gymnasiums, as well as one media center. Good afternoon. My name is Mark Wergeland. I am the principal at Jefferson School. Jefferson Elementary uh, is an elementary school of approximately 700 students. Uh, we serve students in grades 1 through 6. Uh, we have a comprehensive educational program for our students, including special education and uh, many different programs in the area of physical education, art, vocal music, instrumental music, band, and orchestra. Uh, we currently have 40 licensed staff in the building, and in addition to that, we also have 16 non-licensed uh, support staff in the building. Uh, Jefferson School uh, was originally built in 1958, the original structure. Uh, shortly thereafter, uh, it's my understanding, about a year later, uh, there were four additional classrooms that were added to the building. Uh, in 1968, uh, the new addition was built. This addition now houses grades four through six, has a, uh, a new gymnasium facility as well as some music rooms. This is a two-story addition to Jefferson School. As I said, that was built in 1968, and uh, we now are able to accommodate uh, all 700 of our students very nicely. Uh, the building is in excellent condition. It's a brick-and-mortar facility. Uh, certainly uh, has been kept up very well by the uh, maintenance crew, and uh, there are uh, virtually no uh, structural uh, concerns at this point in time. Uh, we also have a temporary facility. We call it a, a temporary facility. It's my understanding that it's been there for a number of years. Uh, this facility houses our special education program. We have two resource rooms in that uh, particular building. And uh, also, we have our Chapter 1 people working out of that building. Uh, somewhat of a limited area. It uh, doesn't make for the, the best instructional uh, uh, setting for the students. However, the teachers have adapted, uh, I would say, extremely well and uh, are able to conduct their activities uh, in that area. Uh, that area is uh, serviced uh, by going through a portion of the media center. A wall was uh, taken uh, out of the media center, and so they, the access to the temporary facility is, uh, is indoors. The students do not need to go outdoors uh, for, that, uh, for that service. Uh, some immediate concerns that we do have in the building uh, that have come to my attention by various members of the faculty, uh, we do have some storage problems. Uh, paper supplies, those types of things, uh, seems to be a real, a real cramp on the facility. Uh, the temporary is not, as I indicated earlier, not the best facility in the world for instruction. Uh, uh, certainly, we could use additional space uh, and try and spread that program out a little bit. Uh, one area that we are very excited about is our computer lab. Uh, that is going to be located adjacent to the media center. Uh, we're in the process right now of. Uh, of doing some construction in that area and some rewiring. And when that's completed, it's going to be just a fantastic facility. So uh, with that, uh, ending on that high note, uh, I want to thank you for this opportunity. And uh, should you have any questions about the uh, Jefferson School facility, I invite you to come by and take a look. I want to welcome you to McKinley School. My name is Ralph Meehan. I'm the principal intern here at McKinley School. The school was built, original school was built in 1898. We have an updated edition that you were looking at before, and this building was built in 1958. The exterior of the building is basically brick, and the building is still in good, very good operable condition, but uh, it should, uh, it's kind of small for the number of students that we have here at McKinley. First of all, we have nine classrooms, and we have one we have one craft room where the speech and the LD services are performed. The grades served are K through six in our building. 
We also have two classes of grades K, 1, and 2. And we need, that's, that's what we need the temporaries for that was, that was located on the south end of our building. The number of students that we serve here at McKinley is 242 at present. We have special programs in Title I, which is Chapter One services, speech, and LD. Our media center is probably uh, the biggest need that we have here in our building. It is very, very small, and we also need chap a Chapter One area, as you will probably see in the in a later uh, film. You'll see our Title One Chapter One area is housed up on the stage at the present time. Uh, there is a shower room that is being converted to a Title I room later on this fall when need be. Good morning and welcome to Nurse Strand Elementary School. My name is Mr. Dinovic and I am the building principal. Uh, I'm standing in front of the original school bell then went, went back to the original building uh, which no longer is in existence. Um, it was located to the south of the existing building, and um, but that has since been torn down, and what we have remaining is the bell, and we've kept that kind of as a tradition um, and a representation of what education means to uh, the Nurse Strand community. The building that uh, we are in right now was built in 1960 and uh, the gym, which will be the background uh, to this bell, the gym section, uh, was built prior to 1960. It's a uh, typical elementary school um, built out of uh, brick construction. It's well constructed. Uh, later on in the film you'll see the interior. Uh, it's a very well constructed building. Uh, we have seven classrooms. Uh, our classrooms are uh, combinations and I guess that is our greatest need is to see if we can uh, rid ourselves of uh, the combination classrooms. Now a lot of people ask me uh, why, uh, why is Nurse Strand still open? And my answer is is that uh, uh, Nurse Strand is good for education. It's a need. Just as we have a, an Alum school in Garfield, uh, I think we need an alternative school uh, which uh, presents small class sizes um, and Nurse Strand Elementary affords that opportunity. And, uh, and so uh, I just would like to, uh, to say that uh, you know, the next uh, amount of footage that you see, uh, keep in mind that uh, this is uh, another alternative and it's something that uh, uh, parents who uh, wish to have small classes uh, can take advantage of. <clears throat> I think that I had uh, for forgot to mention one thing. Uh, our total population here at Nurse Strand is um, 110 students. We, um, our program is a K-6 program with combinations. Now this year our kindergarten enrollment is up. We're up to 26. Our first grade is a single unit. They're combination second and third, combination third and fourth, and combination fifth and sixth for a grand total of 110 students. Um, Nurse Strand, being that it is part of the school district, of course, uh, is afforded all of the uh, other programs that the other schools have, all of our specialists, music, art, and phi ed, um, serve our school. We also have a, uh, a special education cooperative program for the hearing impaired located at Nurse Strand, where we have children coming in from uh, Northfield, uh, Webster, Faribault, and um, uh, that program is located here at Nurse Strand School. Um, I think that pretty much covers it in the short period of time that we have. Uh, and again, uh, I thank you for your cooperation. Hey, this is Washington School. 
The original building was built in 1907 and addition was added in the 1950s. The general construction is brick. The windows in the old portion of the building have been replaced with ener more energy efficient windows. There are three classrooms and a media center in the old part of the building. Four classrooms in the newer addition and we also have two temporary buildings which are presently being used as classrooms. The building serves kindergarten through grade six. The enrollment this year is 234 students. We have, in addition to the regular classrooms, such special help as speech, LD class, chapter one. And we are in need particularly of further classroom space if we are to have any additional classes. Presently we have used up all of the available classroom space. We have no suitable space for music, band, or orchestra. Uh, we have limited media center space and we are lacking in smaller spaces for special services and office space. This is Faribault Junior High School. I'm Mr. David Thayer, Dean of Students at Faribault Junior High School. This is our second full year in our brand new building. We moved in in the November of 1985, so we have been in this building not quite uh, two and one half years. The construction of the building is the exterior masonry bearing walls interior concrete columns supporting a steel beam and joint roof structure. The interior is masonry walls with flexible demountable partitions in the academic wing. In other words, given a 24-hour period, our custodial staff can remove the walls in the uh, classrooms, making them uh, two large areas or uh, three large areas in the classrooms. At Faribault Junior High School, we have 858 students, 7th, 8th, and 9th grade. The breakdown is 334 students in the 9th grade, 253 in the 8th grade, and 271 in the 7th grade. We offer a full range of programs at Faribault Junior High School including special education that also includes a learning center and an off-campus school at Dow Hall. The media center is in the center of the school. We also have a computer center and a math computer lab. There are 56 teaching stations in the new junior high school. As I mentioned, a media center, two computer labs, two locker rooms, one science lab observatory, one large group lecture area, cafeteria, kitchen, nurses station, and one administrative area. There's 148,183 total square footage. To the north and back of our building, we have a 400 meter all weather track, four asphalt tennis courts, two to three baseball fields, two to five softball fields, these can be flexible, and um, a 25 bus parking stall. This is the main drop off and pick up point for our entire school district here at the junior high school. This will be a descriptive tour of the senior high school. A building that was built in 1958 uh, had one addition in 1974, which was the swimming pool. In addition, 10 temporary buildings have been uh, added to the senior high school, the oldest being uh, 1970, so it is 17 years old, four of them. And then somewhere around seven years ago, uh, four or five more temporaries were added. So we right now are using nine temporaries in addition to uh, the main building. The building was built for a capacity of 800 students and our enrollment for the fall of 1987 is 1,025 students in the day program and an additional 75 students in the night program. 
Uh, we have 21 general classrooms, not counting the temporaries. Uh, there are eight temporaries that are termed general classroom. Uh, located in the temporaries would be all of the math classes. The foreign language classes of German and Spanish are in the temporaries. The theater class and the health class, or at least uh, the majority of the health classes, are in the temporaries. And then we have the auto mechanic shop, which is a uh, really just an enlarged uh, home type garage in which we have auto mechanics three sections two of them vocational two hours long and one a one hour recreational type of uh, auto class in addition uh, we have two classes that are specialized for special education purposes uh, one art room two home economics classes we have uh, two music rooms an ag classroom and an egg shop that is in transition from the traditional egg shop to a technology lab. We have a woods classroom, the tech center, career resource center, the old metals shop, uh, houses three computer centers, a general small classroom, and then of course the core of the entire complex is the career resource center. The cafeteria also doubles five hours a day as a study hall. We have a gymnasium and the swimming pool and a media center. We have three grades here, 10 through 12, and obviously we are at capacity with the three grades. Uh, the special programs and services that uh, I feel the senior high uh, most features would be the career center. It is a unique concept in uh, public schools any place and generally the feedback we get it is a, a model that could be used by many other uh, schools. As far as the particular needs uh, in addition to just space we were built in the 1950s mentality where uh, classrooms were built to a, uh, a general model but then what went into it was decided after the building was open. So a typing room uh, or a science room really materialized and was became special after the building was built, after the classrooms were built. So there is really no difference from one classroom to another as far as size or usage. And of course we uh, in no way are ready for uh, the technological types of education that we feel uh, is necessary to bring us into the 21st century, especially students uh, at the senior high level. And for that type of program we need, uh, we have absolutely no technological communications in the senior high school. We have, we have need for a uh, communication center where not only we can produce media type operations but that we can get involved in uplink, downlink satellite communications. Uh, we are hoping to start a technology lab that would be where the old egg shop was where we can get involved in such things as robotics, laser, holography and really take the computer and show its practical application. And uh, we also have a great need to expand or get a facility for our automotive. We have three bays and we actually cannot uh, elevate the cars. It uh, has no running water. It has no communication system with the main building. Uh, it was a temporary facility put up that has become rather permanent. So as far as our students uh, being able to experience the technology that's in automotive now, we just don't have the facilities or the equipment or the room to do any of that in the future. The school district administration building was constructed in 1965 by the Faribault Industrial Corporation. For the first several years, it was used by controlled data to, for light assembly work. Following that, uh, the building remained vacant for a number of years and then was used as temporary headquarters for county welfare services. The school district purchased the building in 1976, occupying one half of the facilities. Uh, about a year later, the full facility was occupied. It contains 13,600 square feet and is of concrete block construction. The uh, services which, this, uh, which operate out of this facility are the uh, superintendent's office, the business office for the school district, personnel office, the office of the uh, curriculum and instruction, as well as community education. In addition, the district warehouse occupies approximately 40% of the space in this building. 
In the future, we see that we are going to need to do some remodeling and updating to the facility in terms of improving its energy efficiency and also uh, probably become involved in a re-roofing project in the near future. The location of the facility is not uh, very convenient. It is located on the far north edge of the city and would be better located if it were toward the center of town. At this point, for example, uh, this office is located five miles from the junior high school. The Early Childhood Family Education Program has found a new home by renting the Creamery in downtown Faribault. This program is a family education program designed for parents and their preschool-aged children. It offers day and evening parent discussion classes and parent-child activities, as well as field trips and special event family activities. It gets its operating budget from special funding through the Community Education Program. The Early Childhood Family Education Program has been running now for three years. During that time, it has held classes at Lincoln School, First English Lutheran Church, and Evangelical Free Church. All of these sites worked fairly well, but at the same time, they presented certain problems. Equipment on hand was seldom geared for the zero to three age group. Equipment, supplies, snacks, etc., had to be hauled from site to site. Facilities had to be shared so nothing could be left out from class to class. Without bulletin boards, displays of resource material, comfortable chairs for adults, etc., it was hard to create an environment that would enhance learning. There was little feeling of ownership or belonging on the part of the parents involved. In the spring of 1987, we discovered the creamery was for rent. It has six rooms plus a reception area. Specific age rooms can be set up for babies on up to pre-kindergartners, and there is also a place to provide child care for brothers and sisters of children enrolled in the program. In addition, there is a comfortable room where parents can meet and discuss child-rearing joys and concerns. The building is old, but has been completely remodeled on the inside. There is plenty of parking, and the area is well lighted for nighttime activities. There's space for bulletin boards and resource displays. The equipment is the right size, and parents can find a comfortable place to talk and learn. For the people in the Early Childhood Family Education Program, right now, Creamery is home. Okay, this is uh, Dow Hall, uh, which uh, offices the uh, personnel that work in the Cannon Valley Educational Cooperative. There are 16 licensed staff people that work out of this office and serve the uh, member districts of the cooperative, which includes Faribault, Northfield, Medford, Morristown, Randolph, Kenyon, and the State Academies. The building is owned by the State Academies, and we lease it from them uh, as part of their membership in the cooperative. In addition to the co-op staff that work out of this office, we have the uh, junior high off-campus program, which has uh, approximately uh, eight to nine students at this time, but uh, we have as many as 16 students before, and those are students that are referred uh, to the program from the uh, junior high in Fairville. We've been in the building for three years uh, and occupied just the main floor. The two top floors of the building are not being used for any educational purposes or for any purposes at this time. So we are looking at uh, this office space uh, to serve us uh, for a period of time uh, based on what decision the Department of Education and the state uh, make uh, regarding uh, what they will do with the building in the future. Hello and welcome to the Faribault Technical Institute. The facility that you're at was constructed from 1964 to 1966. Basically, the outside perimeter of the building has not changed during that period of time. It's a one- and two-story building consisting primarily of classrooms and laboratories for the different programs that are offered here. Uh, the exterior of the building is all brick, and the ceiling is the, the flat uh, tar and rock composition style, which is about to undergo the process of being re-roofed uh, within the next 10 days from today's date. The building is in fairly uh, good condition. It was inspected by uh, 
uh, preventive maintenance engineers from uh, Rochester within the last year and a half. There is some additional point tucking and so forth that needs to be done primarily on east exposure to the building. Uh, we've made some exterior changes in that we've added some additional parking uh, to accommodate the, the students and uh, the volume of people that do come and go here. The uh, inside of the building uh, has received remodeling in various shops and laboratory areas. Uh, currently, uh, we have students that are at our north campus where our carpentry and our marine and small engines program is located. Uh, we have a program of sales and marketing over at Faribault Town Square. And our nursing class has moved up to the regional center to a building called West Cottage. And our small business management programs are now located in the city hall building. We hope that within the next 18 months, uh, when construction is completed, that all of those programs will once again fit back into this facility and at which time we'll probably experience the problem we had to begin with, lack of parking, even with our expanded parking facilities. The uh, areas that are still in this building uh, would be our welding programs, our machinist tool and die, our building care services technician, electronic business machine technician, uh, our accounting and secretarial programs, our medical laboratory technician, engineering drafting, and human services technician classes are held here. Uh, in addition to their lab areas, they have the appropriate classroom space uh, to counterbalance their, their instruction. Uh, the Technical Institute deals with students that are beyond the high school uh, uh, age, and our students uh, this fall, it looks like we have an age range from about 17 uh, to the oldest student currently is 61. Uh, among our daytime classes. Uh, our evening students, we really don't keep track of their ages. Uh, this summer, we ran approximately 1,000 students here in extension classes in, a, in addition to our regular post-secondary programs. The area in which we're now standing outside the Faribault Technical Institute, and this would be the west side of the building, and we're very close to what you would call Prairie Avenue along this particular side. Uh, this area that we're in will be completed in the new parts of the building as we add to this side of the building. About where I am standing will be our one of the entrances or I might even be in the lab area for the child care center, the daycare center that will actually be here. Uh, as I look just off to this side off of our cafeteria There'll be a lecture type area with elevated seating or an elevated stage uh, to accommodate approximately 90 people. The areas that now comprise the main offices, administrative offices inside the building uh, will become our new media center and the new administrative offices and student services office will be up towards the front uh, connected right off where the, where the theme of the institute is located uh, right out to within a few feet of the curb on this side of the building. Hello, we're now standing at the uh, southeast corner of the Faribault Technical Institute. Uh, directly behind me, you'll see some construction materials and insulation for the re-roofing re project, uh, which should start now within this first week of October uh, 1987. But as we continue our plans over the next 18 months to two years, the south side of the VOTEC will continue across the sidewalk, across the road, and the wall of the building, I am told, will be somewhere about this side uh, of the curb. So it'll be quite an expansion really to the south and requiring a new roadway uh, being constructed in here to travel around the building. Also, as we look at the east side of this particular wing, the facility will come approximately another 40 feet to the east, which would eliminate basically that two-stall garage that you see there, because we would be about another 10 feet to the east beyond that particular garage. Now, these facilities would be used to uh, house the carpentry and marine and small engines program. Our engineering drafting program would most likely be moved off the second floor of the building 
and possibly onto the second floor of this particular wing uh, that will be constructed in this area. The welding shop will have some built-in storage space and carpentry will also be located here along with some of the storage needs uh, that they need. So we have some very exciting things that are happening uh, at the Technical Institute and uh, hopefully if you should come back in two years and take another look at this it'll be a, quite a change facility both from the exterior uh, and the interior. Thank you. We hope that this visit to each of the school facilities has been informative and provides a base for understanding future needs of the Faribault Public Schools. It is important to obtain the input which is based on information from you, the task force studying this issue. Thank you for your help.